Adios, Nachos, amigos, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Record Breakers. I am Petey Rave, and I've managed to uh, reconstruct and put everything back together. You don't need to know what, though. And you're one, and, and I'm your man with no plan. Here with me, of course, is my crew, my team, uh, my squad. Uh, we've got Brett. Call me DJ Sleep. The purveyor of Snorkor. Yes. We've got Drew. Squad. Yes. And we've got Patrick. I would have gone with DJ Ambien. I actually I know that. a DJ Sleep, but, but you know. <laughs> DJ Ambien. Yes. <laughs> DJ, DJ Zequel. That's uh, right. Zequel. Uh, we're here to talk about music. We're here to talk about uh, share with each other. As we do every week, we, we each take turns sharing an album for the others to partake in and enjoy and share their opinions on. Uh, the provider of the music this week is Patrick. Patrick, what do you got for us this week? So several weeks ago, through uh, unclear and unremembered circumstances, I found out the Mountain Goats did an album about professional wrestling. And as some of you may know, if you ever listened to PD's uh, Gone But Not Forgotten uh, fanny pack podcast. I enjoy myself some professional wrestling. So I'm like, you know what? I have, I have Google music. I can access this in a legal way that somewhat compensates the band for their time. And I went and listened to it. Uh, it's called beat champ it's by the mountain goats. And, uh, I, I decided upon listening a few times that I had to bring it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely an interesting, uh, concept or an album, an interesting prospect for an album. Uh, Brett, what were your expectations coming into this album? My expectations, well, I didn't know the band. I was unfamiliar. Uh, I am familiar with the music that I am normally given by the, the, the provider of this week's music. So I always go in with a, uh, with a clinched butt, um, wondering uh, what I'm going to get into. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I will have things to say about that shortly. But no, I had no clue what I was getting into. I, I'm, I didn't even know what genre I was looking at. <laughs> Uh, Drew, what were your expectations coming into this? Well, when he handed this off, uh, Patrick made mention of them being an indie folk type outfit, which can mean a lot of things these days. So I didn't know which end of the folk spectrum, whether it was just some storytelling and an acoustic guitar being the front, but some like polished stuff around it or whether it was just an acoustic guitar and maybe some sort of bass instrument and just doing it for the hell of it um a la like an andrew jackson jihad sort of situation um so i didn't know which spectrum i was gonna get but i was confident that there was probably gonna be an acoustic guitar and probably some relatively quick rhythms and stuff about wrestling, and I don't know. I didn't know how much wrestling I was going to get, which we will get into. Yes, let's get into it. Definitely an interesting album, to say the least. Uh, Patrick, how would you describe this album musically? Um, I'm going to talk about both musically and topically because that's the the inspiration for me listening to this album was the topic matter, but then I discovered actually the music's kind of fun too. So it's as I mentioned, sort of folk rock, but like you know, you put the word indie in front of it when it doesn't really neatly fit into a genre. That that usually happens. Um, it's it's definitely mostly electric guitar driven, although there is a lot of piano driven songs on this album. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't neatly fit into just one genre, but but it definitely fits within the if you take folk rock and indie rock and sort of mash it together you cover a lot of the ground here although not all of it and while the album is ostensibly about professional wrestling it's a lot of it as sort of the way i see it is is and the more i'm learning about the mountain goats who are a band i've known about forever but never really listened to um are like you know john darniel the lead singer and sort of uh, the mountain goat, if there was one who was the band and then a bunch of other people who have joined since then, um, it's all about his storytelling. And this is uh, mostly telling stories about life and life events through the lens of wrestling. And anything that is about wrestling is 
at t- very often an allegory for something else or, you know, a motif at which he has decided to tell stories on a record. Um, so there's there are definite songs on this that are very, very much about a wrestler or, you know, an event in wrestling. But there's also a lot that are just sort of talking about, you know, life stuff that happens, but sort of through the eyes of, of a wrestler or are telling a story about a wrestler, either real or fictional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of, it mixes up those, those themes, it mixes up those feelings of like, it's about multiple things. It's, it's, uh, on the surface about wrestling, but it's about multiple things, which is cool. It's really neat. Uh, Brett, how would you describe this album musically? What would be the themes that must have caught your attention? Well, it's, uh, it's a not it's not exactly an upbeat kind of music uh there's nothing that's gonna light a fire in your ass and make you do the jump splits um but that's not really the aesthetic they're going for there's not one <laughs> banjo not one banjo comes in and 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 folks it up but uh it's uh it's very simple um and it's kind of got a surreal um kind of folky americana thing going on that i that i enjoyed um there's uh you know you get fuzzed out bass in some songs you get horns that go along with it sometimes you get uh you know you get a lot of strummed heavily strummed acoustic guitar um a lot of the brush the a lot of the drums are 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 they have brushwork um there's acoustic piano uh there's really a whole lot of stuff that goes on to in um, on different tracks, but in the tracks themselves, they're very simple. They're, they're tight little songs. Um, and the songs do last long enough that they can breathe and sort of, um, get to the point and, uh, and have a payoff at the end of them. They're really well-crafted songs. Um, but it really, it's a, it's a genre bending sort of album. And when I listened to this album, uh, I let it just keep playing and play their other albums. Um, so, uh, like this is, this is their thing. Like this is the sound, um, but uh, you know there, there's there's nothing that's really gonna jump out at you and be like oh sprungity sprung sprung, but uh, that that's again th- there was there's a simplicity and efficiency in the music, um, and lyrically uh, they talk about wrestling, so yeah that's yeah. that's about <laughs> like I they they cover a lot of things uh, if 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 that's your thing it doesn't yeah. have to be your thing and you can still enjoy the music. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about the, the specific topics, but yeah, they do they do have some fun with uh, wrestling motifs and wrestling ideas and events as well. Uh, Drew, what would be the themes elements that caught your attention? How would you describe this album musically? Well, I was I was gonna open up me explaining what I got out of this record with asking if. Uh, anybody believed uh, John Darnielle's kayfabe of this record being about more than just wrestling. And apparently some of us do, cause I'm not a hundred percent sure. Cause yeah, like it, it's about wrestling. There, there's a certain stabbing that's mentioned. There's, um, there's some dark spots in wrestling that this actually gets into, which is really weird, but there's also like, it's wrestling. So like at the same time, yeah, it could probably be like, it, using wrestling as a motif to get into other subjects was really kind of neat um, way to do it. It's still ostensibly about wrestling. Um, you don't have your second track without it being pretty much wrestling. Um, but this album in general hit me upside the head with how tight everything was. This album has the man's been doing it for a while. Uh, if you look it up and it shows the dude can write a catchy damn guitar hook. Like, and that's in this era in like that sort of folky genre that you have to be able (laughs) to write a catchy guitar hook. Um, so with that, you have an album that in its essence has fun in a lot of spots, but also explores some like cool stories and, the storytelling on the record, I think was really, really spot on. Um, like I said, you have, and we'll probably get into it. Some of us about different things, but like, there's a lot of heart on this record for being a record that is so well 
polished. The amount of like just pure like sort of raw like heart that this man put in it is I think absolutely fantastic. And the composition, the time spent with it, I think sort of goes to show that it's something that is great. That's uh, it got to use wrestling parlance. It got a pop out of me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's definitely a loving tribute to wrestling uh, in many ways, but also kind of using a lot of cool motifs in different ways, telling actual stories. And we can talk about some of the, uh, those stories as we get into the key tracks. Uh, Patrick, what would be some of the key tracks uh, to zero in on? I'm going to start here with a song that sucked me in and why I pretty much, when I heard this song, I was like, Oh, this is, if this album is, is good. Otherwise, this is, you know, something I'm interested in. And that is the legend of Chavo Guerrero, uh, uh, specifically the elder Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero, not the younger one who, you know, from TV. Um, it, it was his father. Uh, this just, when I heard it, it was like, this is one of the best things I've heard in a minute. Like it's really good. And it's just sort of an upbeat folk rock song, but, Lyrically, it captures it, it captures hero worship from a child's perspective in a way that is like sincere and earnest and innocent. Like it, it is all about, you know, watching your hero in this case, you know, Chavo Guerrero overcoming the odds and, and defeating the, the bad guys. It is it is how maybe a cartoon made you feel that way. Maybe wrestling made you feel that way. Whatever it was in your life when you're a little kid that like, you know, made you made you feel feelings about about some sort of form of entertainment. And it also like captures what makes wrestling great. Like there's this there's a little line about like him him hating Chavo's enemies and literally praying nightly for their death. Like that's the emotions wrestling can elicit. And it's also just a fun song. And it just that was the one that got me. And do yourself a favor. If nothing else, go on YouTube and watch the video for The Legend of Chavo Guerrero because Chavo Guerrero is in it along with a whole bunch of other, you know, great wrestlers. It's just it's funny and silly and uh, and it made me happy. Uh, for an object, a lighthearted song about stabbing someone's eyes out. Um, and this is sort of where I get into the I, I can see like wrestling as a motif for just capturing what it's like to be pissed off at someone and want to stab them in the eye with a foreign object. Like it is, it is a song about, you know, it's a song about a feeling you might have in life, but done up about wrestling also has just a cool sax part that sort of, you know, works with the chorus and enhances it and brings it up a little bit. And, um, uh, again, like musically it's, it's, it's very lighthearted sounding, but it's literally, you know, very violent. Um, Animal Mask, which is a song about your best friend who also happens to be a wrestler and eventual tag partner. Um, again, like you can take this as a direct song about wrestling or you can take in that it, it is really talking about someone you've known for a long time that you have been through a lot with. Um, also has some lovely steel guitar it borders on country ish. I don't want to call it a country song because I don't know my country well enough musically but it has steel guitar and you know a bass with some flat wound strings doing that like dull snappy thing that's flat wound strings do and it's just it's a lovely song and then uh for i what i would say is musical ambition alone fire editorial it's almost jazzy it's d definitely drum jazz it's completely piano driven and it's a story song, and I like story songs as I think I've probably said on this podcast a hundred times. Called ballads. Yeah, it might be a ballad. You call that a ballad? Yeah. Like I like There's, I like, like a, a song word that, for that. I like a song that tells a story. I think of ballads as soft songs, but I guess it is literally a yes, song that tells a, a story. Ballad of Curtis Lowe. Yeah. But Amos uh, Moses. It, it it definitely like again this album doesn't neatly fit into one or even two genres because you know, he likes to explore and try some shit. And like, if, if you go through and look at like all the people John Daniels worked with over the years, like, like he's BFFs with khaki King and Annie Clark. And, you know, 
like gets to work with cool people and make interesting weird music and that that i appreciate yeah um brett what would be some of the key tracks for you well um i'm gonna do what i i I never say this i never get to say this i'm gonna do the record breakers thing uh southwestern territory uh it's it's a piano track with you know drums played with brushes um there's some woodwinds thrown in and immediately when i started listening to this i was like okay there's a very deliberate enunciated quality almost ben folds-esque uh with the lyrics um and i was wondering if that was just going to be for this track or whether that's actually what these songs are all going to be like and of it it was it stayed it was by the end of the album it, it it felt a little less jarring as it did in the first track um but yeah that track really set the table for what came later um the legend of chavo guerrero um is a uh, a ballad it's uh it's uh, a very 90s college radio indie rock uh type of song um it does have a modern feel when it hits the chorus um it's it's super tight and super effective and i really thought the drum work on the track was better than really needed to be um it, it, in its simplicity it, it was able to, to pull some stuff off um that that really shocked me um for an object uh, had a really neat fuzzed out bass that was being played along with horns. Um, and I liked that a whole lot because, um, you know, they're being played together. So it just sounded like this really, really fat, like, I don't know, it was, it was almost like the bass guitar was being the tuba, um, but a, a fuzzed out tuba. Um, so uh, I, I also like the way that the, uh, the lyrics and, and the feel of the music were the the contrast of the two it was very lighthearted feeling um for a song about stabbing um and uh werewolf gimmick my god (laughs) yeah that's probably the most uh memorable track off the album um there's like very very slight clipping on the vocals and the guitars and there's a really nice rolling beat um the vocals are very harsh and simple um and and they they the, what is as close to the sprawling of the album is the ambient like organ that's being played behind the entire track that is barely there. It didn't have to be there. You only know it's there like when nothing else is being played. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is very additive and I could probably go through and pick apart like the, Oh, Hey, they did this with this and every single song, but you know, those are from some pretty solid tracks. Mm hmm. Uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Um, so, well, let's go down the list. Uh, Southwestern Territory, um, the, the record breaker thing. Uh, it's a heartfelt song that sort of dives into, like, a story about, like, just your normal average dude who just happens to be a wrestler which I think is kind of cool. Like a lot of times you can get caught up in the sort of pomp and circumstance of wrestling in these big giant, larger than life people. Right. And it's, they're still people. They might be very coked up people. If you are watching in the eighties and early nineties, but they are still people. Um, and that sort of simple piano, the woodwinds behind it. Like I think it was really sort of cool. Um, You can't talk about this album, in my opinion, without talking about The Legend of Chavo Guerrero. Um, This song is way more fun than anything I've heard, I think, in a long time. Like, it's just a fun track that just happens to reference Los Guerreros and happens to do it in a really cool and interesting way. And it's it reminded me all at once of that feeling of like, sitting and watching Monday Night Raw or sitting and watching like Nitro or like that sort of feeling that you get of, I want this guy to win. And you're, it is that sort of entertainment um, that wrestling brings about. You care about the stories and the characters. You care about these people and these giant myths that come out of them. Right. You, it's like, Patrick said it's the hero worship thing, right? Um, foreign objects. I'm by the way, I'm breaking down 
we're going through five uh, today, which is the first time I've done that um, on an album that's not mine, I think. Um, for an object, I have to mention very quickly, though, because um, god damn the horns. Uh, <laughs> the horns on this, if, if you want to talk about a song that would make me pop, um, hey, they're, 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 yeah. um, and once you pop, you just don't stop. Right. Um, and then I'm going to go into a weird thought that I had between uh, Stab to Death Outside of San Juan and Werewolf Gimmick. Um, one, Stab to Death Outside of San Juan, the, so the Bruiser Brody ballad, as it were, if you want to talk about alliteration real quick. Um, I think it was really, really cool. I think it was a really neat way to do like sort of that story. Um Although I almost sort of wish he would have also done one in this style that like was very explicitly about uh, Montreal. Um, but we won't get into that. But I think, in my opinion, it should have been flipped where track nine would have been werewolf gimmick and track or track eight would have been werewolf gimmick. Track nine would have been stabbed to death outside of San Juan because werewolf gimmick to me the song itself, the subject matter of the song just felt like, oh, this guy is just a complete asshole, which kind of would have fit as like the preamble to the Bruiser Brody story, which I think would have made a lot more sense. Personally speaking, I think that would have been a cool like addendum to the whole thing. But overall, I think Werewolf Gimmick was this like cool, dark aside to the whole thing, whereas everything up until this point, there was a lighthearted nature even if it was dealing with things like foreign object or like heel turn stuff like that but like werewolf gimmick very quickly got into this like weird dark musical territory which i really appreciated yeah um yeah and it, it, it goes into some really cool stuff and paying tribute to some some classic wrestlers in chavo guerrero in bruiser brody uh in and uh, also, let's not forget, they also, pay, they also play tribute to uh, Luna Vashon and Bull Ramos uh, later on in the album, which is cool, uh, who are also, you know, worth uh, remembering and uh, tributing, as it were. Um, <clears throat> um, and yeah, those are some great tracks. And now we get into the conclusion. We get bring it back around the horn uh, for some conclusions on this album. Uh, Brett. What would be your conclusion on this album? Well, this isn't really my style, uh, my favorite style of music, and it's not something that I feel like I'm going to dive right back into. Um, also, because I listened to quite a bit of their music that wasn't this album, because I was just like, yeah, screw it. Let's listen to what else they have that's not uh, not wrestling-related. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can definitely see the quality um through the the like this is a lot of expectations were 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 like completely overshot uh like they 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 completely knocked it out uh well I, when i judge patrick's albums i'm i i come in thinking like how can i twist a dagger and like you know because we have this dynamic uh <laughs> because obviously our relationship i do is not try to off. bring you stuff maybe you'll enjoy or at least not hate that, that is a thing that happens sometimes. If you haven't found out yet, our friendship is not based on mutual likes of music. Uh, but There's uh, overlap, I, I, but all of the overlap, I think, is old boring stuff that isn't... Like, how many times do we want to talk about, like, 70s rock records? Uh, I mean, we have. But, like, no the main, mainstream... Pick for the next week. No, um, but, you know, this is an album that's good. If you, if you like it, this genre at all, listen to it. If you're into, it, like, anything adjacent to the genre, listen to it. it, it, it this is an album that's as well-crafted and deserves to be heard. It's, it's, it's pretty all right. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusion on this album? Um... Some of the same and some different. Um, I really think that somehow this band I wasn't familiar with because it's really good. And it's really catchy. I think it's really one. If you like wrestling even a little, I think it's worth a listen. I think that if you like catchy hooks that are driven by sort of simple means, I think it's worth a listen. 
I think that there's a lot to be gained here. And again, I try to keep mine uh, in other people's albums down to three. And like I said, I brought up more. Um, And when that happens, it's usually because I really, really dug a record um, to the point where I think um, later on when I get the time, I want to dive into other stuff and how he's treating this. I kind of want to dive into the life of the world to come just to hear like that side of him as well. Um, Defer as a behind the curtain, that album, all of their tracks are titled after verses of the Bible. So that should be interesting. Um, but all in all, I think this record was really, really great. Um, and I definitely think it's worth it out there for a listen. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to be listening to a lot of these tracks again, because I think they're catching their fun. They're fun to sing along with. So, how? Yeah. um, yeah, this this overall is just a very well, like constructed and fun neat album like i think this is overall neat uh and nifty i think i would call it neat and nifty uh and has a lot of uh a lot of love for for wrestling and and of course as somebody who's who loves the medium loves the art form that is the wacky world of professional wrestling uh i can appreciate that uh and but even beyond that it's just a really good fun folksy album uh that the the songs are just well made and well done um yeah uh patrick what would be some what would be your conclusion on this album so this was like literally i i have a bunch of people in my periphery that are really into the mountain goats like the mountain goats are one of those bands that are big enough to be someone you know's favorite band um, like they're that level of famous. They're not like super, you know, everywhere, but like their t- their music gets on TV shows and stuff and they, you know, get to play on Letterman and whatnot once in a while. But like, I listened to this on the whim because the, the subject matter interested me and I ended up coming out like listening. I've listened to at least a little bit, the two albums that surround this, uh, the one that preceded it, uh, transcendental use and youth and the newest one goths, which is sort of, uh, about growing up in high school and listening to the cure. Uh, so I need some more time with that. Um, it, I I like this guy's storytelling, John Darnielle's storytelling. I like that. That's like what he does with his music. I like that the genres are sort of a little bit all over. And I like that. Like he made a album about wrestling in like a sincere manner that wasn't like poking fun of it, but using it like, Kind of the thing that, like, I think PD can probably identify with when trying to explain wrestling to outsiders. Like, it's 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 storytelling. It's it's everything in wrestling is the same as whatever your favorite TV show is. It's just a different way of going about it. You know, it there's heroes, there's villains, there's a story to be told, and maybe sometimes the hero wins. And like, it treated it like like something to be taken seriously. And and like, I'm happy I listened to this. I'm happy. That I like finally was like, I really need to listen to the Mountain Goats because everyone says, you know, like all these people love them. And uh, yeah, they're worth loving. So go listen to this. And if you enjoy it, uh, listen to their other records. It's don't don't be don't be scared away by being about wrestling. It's only sort of about wrestling, Um, but it's it's an interesting idea that that sucked me in. So go listen Um. to it. Yeah, sometimes the heroes win, sometimes the villains win, sometimes an old woman gives birth to a hand. It's just storytelling, man. It's also, story spoiler telling. alert, John Cena wins. I mean, that's... Uh, I guess now it's more spoiler Roman wins. But, lol, you know. lol, lol. I have no idea what the hell any of you guys are talking about. Fuck Roman. Eh. Take it or leave it. Uh, Look, WWE creative. <laughs> You Sammy Zayn boy. Push. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Uh, push Dr. Trash Uh <laughs> I get that. I get, be- get behind that. In the crowd at, at whatever the last, I think it was at the last pay-per-view, someone had a localized Mother 3 sign, and I thought that was pretty great. Like, second row, giant pink localized Mother 3. There, there was a... It's, it's good to see Roberto Villegas getting out sometimes. 
there was a there was a there was a great sign. Um, I think Brett posted it in our Record Breakers group me a while back. That was just Giant Bomb's logo, and it said "Welcome to the team, Abby and Ben." <laughs> like real big and it was on Monday Night Raw like yeah. right there like uh, that's awesome if it wasn't for a sign at Wrestlemania you may not have had a Waluigi Amiibo yes <laughs> um yes. alright which I still need to get but just so I have it just so I can say I have it I put it I put it right next to the other Amiibo that I the only Amiibo I own which is the Shovel Knight Amiibo and I don't even own a Nintendo console <laughs> I have seven amiibos. I just realized, and that makes me sort of sad, but I'm sort of okay with it. I have none, but now that I have like a Nintendo console again, I'm really afraid. You're on amiibo breakers. Hey, hey if yeah. nothing else, the Shovel Knight amiibo is just a nice little figurine of a game that's really great. <laughs> and it's non Nintendo. You have a non Nintendo amiibo. That's yeah, that's worth something. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but that being said, we transition over to the main event of the evening. Uh, or as uh, one of our favorite people would say, the main event of the evening. Smash the ground. Uh, we have our haiku reviews. Uh, as I do my poor Gavin Lotspeaker impersonation. Uh, do you know how delighted I was? Like the first Wrestle Circus show I go to, and good old Gavin Loudspeaker's the fucking voice of the company. Yeah. Like. He's no that longer the voice of me. Chikara, but his voice of wrestlers. Well, it's a so much of my 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 love of wrestling started with Chikara, and the fact that like I get him and Jervis every month just yeah. makes the world a better place. Yes. Uh yeah. Also, I love that uh at least some at least one uh streaming media platform gives a shit about wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're into wrestling, right. Wrestle Circus on Twitch. That being said, haiku reviews. Before we go get into turn this into the Fanny Pack Wrestling podcast, I lied. We'd have to. I, if we, I have we eight do. amiibos. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, we're going back to Amiibo Cast. <laughs> this is like jumping back and forth between. It's like three podcasts in one. It's Record Breakers. It's Amiibo. It's a, a, a Amiibo podcast. We'd have to come up with a name of that. And uh, and the revival of Fanny Pack. Uh, well, for our audio listeners, game. they don't realize that I've been showing my Amiibos, and I realized that I had to hold up the Guardian one, which I, I forgot I had. Yeah. PD. <laughs> that, that being said, high yeah. reviews. Yes. The arms bent. Let's talk about some haikus. Uh, let's start with Brett. Brett, what is your haiku? A new taste for me. It's simple and to the point. Tight. Little package. Mm-hmm. That's what she said. Yes. Shut your butt. Uh, that's what she said too. Uh, <laughs> uh, so easy. Drew, what is your haiku? That's what she said. Um, maybe I'm a mark, but it hooked me in quick. Kayfabe, be damned. Yeah. Uh, my haiku: fun and folksy tunes, sincere homage to wrestling. Peppered with humor. Uh, Patrick, what is your haiku? Stories about life, but told through pro wrestling, captures some magic. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to kind of sum it all up. Uh, those are our thoughts on the Mountain Goats Beat the Champ. Uh, you can, of course, find that on spot on our Spotify playlist, Play Record Breakers the Home Game. Uh, quick note, uh, credit to, uh, we were talking about who did the cover art. It's, uh, listed as, uh, Leela Corman, Leela Corman, uh, a cartoonist and uh, illustrator. Uh, I-, I love her Wikipedia. She's a cartoonist, illustrator, and Middle Eastern dancer. So kind of nice cool. diversity of interest, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, check out, I, I look her up, check out her work. Uh, cause this is a cool album cover. This is just neat. Uh, but yeah, go check it out on our Spotify playlist, on our Spotify playlist, play record breakers, the home game, uh, on that Spotify playlist, presumably, I actually, I, I'm pretty, I know who it is, uh, is Brett's album. Uh, Brett, what do you got for us next week? 
we're gonna we're gonna go right into uh, another small indie album uh you guys will have to really dig hard for it um it's been many many months since we've brought up uh this album uh but it's time the joke's not funny anymore we actually need to review huey lewis and the news and the album sports yeah yeah uh it is finally time to rip off that band-aid uh and just get right down to it get right it's one that won't make you nervous wondering Uh, what to do one that makes you feel like i feel when i'm with you exactly uh but yeah that'll be next week and but this is this week and you can of course find us all over the internet patrick is at the swagger Brett is at Hibby Dibber Brett H I B B I T Y B I B V A R D. Drew is at X Juicer X. I'm at PD Rave. The show is at Four Record Breakers. That's the number Four Record Breakers. Record Breakers Podcast.com. Record Breakers Podcast at gmail.com. If you want emails, rebelli.net for this and other shows. Rebelli TV on YouTube uh, and other places. Uh, yeah. Find us where you find podcasts. Subscribe, like, share. Uh, do the things. Do all the things. The, all, do all the actions. That At once. Uh, if you can. Triple uh, click. If you wish. If you will. If you will. Uh, but we'll test it. Uh, but that's it. Until next time. Hasta los huevos. Toodaloo.